Hi guys, my name is Tony Maritato. I'm a licensed physical therapist and I wanted to share an experience regarding shoulder pain that might be interesting to a bunch of you out there, whether you're a physical therapist yourself or you're an individual looking for answers to why your shoulder has been hurting lately. So it's really helpful when a physical therapist like me gets hurt or has a painful condition or something's going on to share our experiences with the general public because we have a different perspective. Now, I've been a physical therapist since 2006. I've worked with several hundred individuals who have undergone both rotator cuff repair surgery as well as tried non-surgical ways to reduce or eliminate the limitations in their shoulder. And when I experience something like I've experienced recently, I think I've got to share this kind of information. So this is just personal experience. It's not based in clinical research. If I share anything that maybe uh, I'm not sure about, I'll absolutely tell you, but here's my story. So today is Wednesday, November 24th. On Monday of this week, I went to receive my booster for the COVID uh, vaccination. I received it at about 3.50 p.m. on Monday. By that night, now I did choose to have it in the left shoulder because I kind of anticipated that there would be some soreness and I wasn't sure if I was going to be going into the clinic the next day. Um, but I wanted to make sure that if I did go to the clinic, I was able to function. I am right-handed, so I was going to have the injection done in my non-dominant side. It was a great easy injection. The individual from the pharmacy did the injection just like normal, no complications, no problems. I went home, um, felt great. All, all evening I felt totally fine. By 9 or 10 p.m. that night, started to feel a little bit of soreness, but the normal kind of soreness you would expect after getting a flu shot or anything like that. Um, by that night, now, so if we're saying by 9 o'clock I started to have a little bit of soreness, by 11 or 12 o'clock that night, I started to develop some pain, but it wasn't at the site of the injection. The injection site was on the outside shoulder area. The point of pain was actually in the bicep tendon. It's, and if you've ever been diagnosed with biceps, biceps tendonitis or tendinopathy, that was the kind of pain that I was experiencing. Now, while I've never had a uh, glenohumeral dislocation, to me, that's what it felt like. It felt like my humeral bone had dislocated from the joint and then went back in. Obviously, that didn't happen. There was no indication of anything like that happen, happening, but the pain in the bicep tendon was so significant to the point that almost any active contraction of the bicep, whether it be from elbow flexion, shoulder flexion, abduction, lateral rotation, all of those movements produce significant pain. I noticed that it was virtually impossible for me to find a comfortable position to try and sleep at night. I was waking up repeatedly throughout the night. If I slept on my back, flat on my back, my shoulder went into too much extension. I couldn't sleep on my left side. If I tried to sleep on my right side, the horizontal adduction bringing my arm across my body was painful every position was painful and by three or four o'clock a.m that night it was virtually impossible to sleep that morning uh once you know i woke up i got the kids ready for school we did our normal routine between my wife and i um, i noticed that i was not experiencing the same kinds of symptoms that i had experienced previously with the vaccination i didn't have a headache i didn't have achiness back pain anything like that but the biceps tendon pain continued to progress, progressively worsening, progressively causing greater impairment and limitation in my use of the left upper extremity. So at that point, I started to really pay attention to what I was experiencing because as a physical therapist, if a patient came to me and described the symptoms that I was experiencing, without a doubt, I would have diagnosed it as some sort of tendinopathy. I would have considered it a mechanical problem, whether I would have approached it the way I would typically approach a tendon or musculotendon problem. We would have started with some isometrics. We would have looked at, you know, range of motion and strength deficits, and we would have addressed it as a mechanical issue when in fact, 
there was no mechanical pathology going on. This was purely an immune response, immune mediated symptom that was secondary to the booster shot that I had gotten less than 12 hours earlier. So what it goes to show me is that, and I see this in the clinic quite often when I'm treating new patients, doing an initial evaluation, is my patient might be diagnosed with a rotator cuff tear, a tendinopathy, a tendinitis, something that's going on within the mechanical structures. And when I do an assessment, everything appears to be mechanical. There's mechanical weakness, there's limited range of motion, there are a host of impairments that I would expect with a mechanical problem. But what makes the difference between an appropriate differential diagnosis, between understanding whether this is a mechanical problem or what I'm gonna to refer to as a chemical problem, is in getting a detailed history and looking at the big picture. And so what I mean by that is, was there a specific trauma that happened to the tissue that's causing the impairment or the pain? You know, if somebody tells me a story about I was fine on Monday. I was walking my large German shepherd dog. He saw a bunny rabbit. He went tearing after the bunny rabbit. I wasn't expecting it and it yanked my arm harder than it's ever been yanked before. That's an actual mechanical insult or injury to the connective tissue, to the muscle, to the tendon, the joint. I understand why there's acute pain immediately following something like that. Or somebody who falls off a ladder lands on their shoulder. Somebody who gets involved in a car accident. These are, these are specific acute events that cause the problem. But if somebody comes in with no specific trauma in their history, they, they woke up one day, they noticed their shoulder was bugging them, it progressively got worse, it wasn't got, getting better, maybe it does or doesn't respond to anti-inflammatories, maybe it does or doesn't respond to cortisone or other injections. That is a very different situation and I find that that tends to be more of an immune um, regulated condition rather than a mechanical problem. And typically what you see is when there's immune system involvement, when it's a chemical problem, I will often hear a patient say, oh, I wake up in the morning, it's so painful, it's so stiff, it's sore, I can barely get moving. But once I get moving, once I start doing stuff, it feels better for a while. But if I do too much stuff, it starts to feel worse. Or later in the evening when I stop doing stuff, everything tightens back down, everything becomes painful again, and now I'm back into a bad position or a bad condition. That to me is indicative of a chemical problem, an immuno-related problem, rather than a true mechanical problem. If it's a mechanical problem, a tear or a tendinopathy or something going on like that, I would expect that it's if it's, it's stiff, sore, swollen, first thing in the morning, but once you get moving right from the beginning, movement activity increases pain that never goes through a point where it feels better and then later feels worse again. When it's truly a mechanical problem, if I break a bone in my lower leg, it hurts when I don't move it. If I get up and stand and walk, it hurts with every step. It doesn't improve. In fact, it hurts worse with every step. That is a true mechan mechanical pathology. But if I have an inflammatory, systemic inflammatory condition going on or something that's involving my immune system, typically we see it's stiff, it's sore, it's swollen, I get moving, I feel better. There's a sweet spot of, you know, maybe it's 10, 15, 20 minutes where I feel the best. And then I stop and it starts to get painful again. The reason why I share this information with you is because even me as a physical therapist with a lot of experience, fortunate enough to work with hundreds of patients over my career, I am still asking these questions. I'm still trying to figure out why is this happening? Why do I feel the symptoms that I feel? What does this mean? My top priority is, does this mean that I'm causing more harm or damage with movement through the pain? Or is the pain simply an alarm system that's causing me to, to wake up and pay attention but not necessarily telling me to stop doing what I'm doing. These are important questions that I think we all need to answer until we, we as in the science, the profession, actually come up with real concrete answers because 
I still think to this point, the, the researchers out there in the university medical settings that I look up to, that I respect, that have my full attention, they still will openly say, we just don't know, we just don't have the answers that we need. The research isn't there yet to definitively say, this is what's going on. So guys, best advice I can give you, pay attention to your body, pay attention to your symptoms, your condition, try to find the language to best describe what's going on. And when you do go see your surgeon, when you do go see your physical therapist, do your best to relay the information as completely as possible. And if something doesn't make sense to you, if something just, the, the facts don't add up, there's probably a reason for it. And you need to investigate a little deeper. You need to ask better questions. I hope this kind of information was helpful for you. If it was, do me a favor, like the video, post a comment below. I will catch you guys on the next video. Thanks so much for watching.